Hey guys, it's Sarah and today I'm gonna do kind of like a, it's almost like a tag video if you will. I saw this on Elliot Brooks's channel. So I will leave her video down below where I saw her do this. And it's almost like a challenge and it's called The Perfect Book. And basically you take different aspects of books, whether it's like plot, characters, romance, villains, different types of things featured in books and you pick an author who you would want to create that type of thing in the book and then that creates your perfect book. So you're blending all these authors together to create something that you would consider a perfect book. So I thought it was kind of fun. Let's do it. There's 10 different aspects here and some of them can easily go into fantasy realms just naturally so I'm going to try not to do everything fantasy so we're going we're gonna to try. Okay the first one is prose and for that one I'm definitely going to say Lainey Taylor who wrote the Daughter of Smoke and Bone trilogy and she also wrote Strange the Dreamer duology and her writing is beautiful. <laughs> I'm not huge on prose as a writing style or like lyrical writing or flowery writing as it's sometimes called but Lainey Taylor is definitely the exception for me because I have read Daughter of Smoke and Bone and I have read the Strange the Dreamer duology and I loved the Strange the Dreamer books I mean loved both of them so her writing is just <sighs> it's very it's very lyrical it really is and even though I'm not normally big on that, I don't want all my books to be like that, but hers I can definitely always read because they're just beautiful. This one is world building, which I think definitely lends much heavier in the fantasy realm. And I'm gonna go with Marissa Meyer on this one because especially with her Lunar Chronicles books, I can so easily picture this made up world and the things that are happening in it and the characters that look different from everybody, I can easily picture it because of the way that she is describing everything and the way that she slowly integrates everything into the world and you're slowly learning all the things. It's not a whole bunch of stuff at once that I can't keep straight, which I appreciate. <laughs> she slowly builds on things and you know, you're in this part and then it transitions into this part and oh, well that makes this part make a little bit more sense. And it's just, the way she does it is really great. So definitely more Meyer for that one. Next one is Magic System, <laughs> another fantasy one, but hands down Brandon Sanderson. His magic systems are so great and they're very unique. And I like the way that he writes them. He writes them in a way that makes me understand it. <laughs> and helps me to easily picture what's happening and to easily understand is like the best word that I can use to describe it. But he will also put in the tiniest little details about the magic system that makes things click really easily. Um, I especially remember when I was reading the first Mistborn book that, you know, I'm reading about the magic system and I'm like, okay, okay, I'm following. Okay, I got it. And then he'll say like one little line. I'm like, oh, there it is. Like it makes so much sense. And it's such a little detail that a lot of authors probably would have left out. And it would have made me question things a little bit more, I think. And just he puts that one little line in there that's like, that's the click. So definitely Brandon Sanderson for Magic System. Next one is characters. We're going to go with Taylor Jenkins Reid on this one. I love her characters. <laughs> I love that her characters can surprise you. I love that I can pick up a book by her and I think I know what this character is going to be like but I'm completely wrong because you really really get to know her characters and her books and the biggest example I can think of is Malibu Rising. I picked up that book thinking that Nina was going to be just this California stuck up surfer girl <laughs> you know like kind of like a rich snob type thing but she was the complete opposite and that was such a nice surprise. So characters I think Taylor Jenkins Reid does really well. Plot. This is a big one because I'm a plot driven reader. <laughs> I like I like my plots. I will pick up books based on plot over characters all the time. Um, I kind of went with <laughs> one that I think not a lot of people are gonna agree with me on, but I went with Sarah J Mass on this one. And 
I just like her plots in her books. And I know that she does the series. So it's like one big plot throughout the whole series. But I like them. I like the plot of Throne of Glass. I like that the king was looking for an assassin and she needed help. And then she got into this competition and it goes from there. And there's just so much to build on with that, which I think is why her plots are so good. She creates these this basic plot in the first book and then it can just go and it can go in so many different directions. So I really, really like that. Um, I also like the plot of the Court of Thorns and Roses series where we have a girl who accidentally kills a wolf and her punishment is she has to go live in the Fey world, which is very dangerous for her. And it goes from there. <laughs> you know, um, I don't even know the plot of the House of Earth and Blood book because I haven't read it yet and I'm not looking into it very much. I'm going to wait until I just pick it up and let it be a surprise. Um, but I really like her plots. So it, it is what it is. I said what I said. Okay, action and battle. I'm going to go with John Gwynn on this one. That man can write a battle scene. They're fantastic. <laughs> um, they're long. You can really get into them. He is not afraid to hurt his characters, which hurts my heart, but he's not afraid to hurt them. And I think that makes for a good battle scene, definitely, because you're literally watching these characters get hurt. They remember I was reading a battle scene in Malice and I was holding my breath, like, and I knew I was holding my breath. So don't come at me with my most hated line where I was, I let out a breath I hadn't realized I was holding. I knew I was holding my breath. But I was, I was just like, oh my gosh, like I couldn't breathe through it because it was just so intense and like, I didn't know what was going to be happening. <laughs> so yeah, like he writes good battle scenes. Humor. And I've got to give this one to Jay Kristoff. His humor and my humor are like on point. <laughs> so when I'm reading one of his books and he just comes out with like these one-liners that are so sarcastic, I love them. I even read a few out to my husband when I was reading Empire of the Vampire recently. I was reading some of these humorous lines out loud and he, even he was laughing without any context of the book. So I just, I love his humor and I love that it's woven through and I can tell where his humor is coming through, especially with the Illuminae series because those were co-written with another author, but I could tell where he was putting his humor in. So yeah. Okay, romance. I'm going to give this one to Christina Lauren. I really like their romance concepts and the way that their romances come about and the way that their romances go. <laughs> I really like how they handle each one differently. And it's not always predictable, to be honest with you. You don't always know where it's going to be going. And they can write a good love scene too, not going to lie. Hero. I'm going to give this one to JK Rowling, guys, because I mean... Harry Potter, how much of a hero can you get? And he's also very complicated. And, you know, obviously Harry Potter is like the ultimate hero, but he, he goes through some times, guys. Like some of the later books, he goes through some dark stuff. Poor boy's got to go through puberty at some point too. You know what I mean? Like he goes through some things and he goes through some struggles with, you know, having some villainous tendencies, and urges and he's trying to decide, you know, it would just be so easy for me to give into this. And he has to make that hard decision not to, and it can be a hard decision. You see him struggle. So that's a good hero to me. And the last one is the villain. I'm going to go with V.E. Schwab. And the reason I'm going with her on this is because of her vicious series, because Victor and Eli are such good villains and they are so gray because you're rooting for one or the other, but they're both villains. And it's very interesting to have kind of that conflicting, you know, why am I rooting for this person? He's not a good person. And you can see him be not a good person and you get the thoughts of this is not a good person, um, but you're still rooting for them and you love them, but you shouldn't. Another good one, I think if you want to go not the fantasy realm could be Caroline Kepnes with Joe Goldberg. He's the ultimate you should not be rooting for this person, but you are, and you know you're not supposed to, but you do anyway, and it's very confusing. But that to me makes a good villain because you kind of get it, but you know it's wrong. <laughs> so it's just very conflicting. So I like that. Okay, guys, those are my answers for the perfect book 
challenge, if you will. That's kind of fun. Um, and these are some of my favorite authors as well. Not every single one of them is like a favorite of all time or whatever, but some of them are. So um, yeah, that was fun. All right. Let me know your thoughts down below. Let me know some of the answers to this. If you guys have answers of your own. Um, and yeah, I will talk to you guys again soon. Hope you have a good day. Bye.